so here's the situation. You have yourself a perfectly normal Game Boy Advance. Um, aside from that scarring of the screen there, we'll, we'll just ignore that for now. Take care of it later. So you have yourself a perfectly normal Game Boy Advance, and you're looking at all these fantastic IPS kits, and you're going, man, that looks great. But then you look at the price and go, man, that's not for me. Don't worry, my friends. There's another option. There is a front light kit. Now, I have never done a video on one of these, and I have absolutely never recommended one because, unfortunately, they look like crap. Now, I will I will concede that these are the absolute cheapest way to get some uh, internal lighting on your Game Boy console so that you can use it outside of moderate um, in-home lighting or outdoor lighting, etc. But I, I just genuinely think they're not worth the money. I have done one of these before, but it was well before my, um, my YouTube career, as it were. Um, I do have, if you lurk my Reddit account, you can probably scroll back through my post and you can find that first front light Game Boy that I made. It did not turn out well. It, um, it was terrible. In fact, it's what led me to make this console with an AGS 101 screen. And honestly, I think it's worth backlighting. If you look at one of these screens and you think, yeah, that's not for me. I need something with lighting. It's worth backlighting. But, you know, maybe that's not convincing you. So let's try to find a front light mod and uh, let's see how it turns out. So you'll have to forgive me. I have done one of these before, but it has been a very long time. I also have a slight handicap going for me right now, but try and work around that. My donor today is a perfectly working Game Boy Advance console with a less perfectly working Game Boy Advance screen, but do you remember of Danny right here? Okay. I've done enough backlights at this point that I just have screens laying around. So there are two ways that you can install one of these bad boys, with or without Loka. And for those that don't know, Loka is um, it, it's glue, uh, but it's an acronym, and Loka itself stands for Liquid Optically Clear Adhesive. Basically, you're going to want to glue the screen to the front light panel, and uh, it's going to result in a much better looking mod. motherboard out of here. A lot of the earlier consoles have three motherboard screws, one on the left, two on the right, but a lot of the later models, they ditched one of these screws here. It's not really a concern, it just means that Nintendo realized that the screw was, um, extra and they realized they could save a little bit a little bit of money by omitting it because it didn't actually contribute to the build quality of the machine. Just pop that out of there. As usual, since you've got the console apart, fantastic time to actually clean it up. I mean look at all that look at all that gunk in there. I'm of course not going to bother cleaning it up right now. Not because it doesn't need cleaning, but because I don't think I need to extend this video any longer than it needs to be. Let's go ahead and pop this screen out of there. I'm gonna pull out this gasket as well. Unfortunately, we will not have room for it. Uh, the front light panel does take up quite a bit of space, so we'll remove this. It's not too big of a deal, but what this does is it prevents dust from getting behind this plastic lens and in front of the screen there. It's one of the things that you have to remove if you're installing an AGS-101 screen as well, but 
we'll get this out of here. Uh, this is actually a pretty easy issue to fix. You just got to take the screen. You, you got to get some new um, polarization film, but you can, you can peel off the polarizer on this thing. Like that. And then just lay down a new polarizer. Comes off super easy. But I don't have any new polarizers to lay down on this, so I'm just going to leave it for now. Because I've got a whole other screen that works perfectly fine. But to get this light panel in here, we do have to do a little bit of modification to the shell itself. Let me pop this out of here. We can do some test fits. Now this panel was provided to me by Retro Game Repair Shop, or this whole kit rather. Um, again, can't really recommend them, but let's try it out and see what happens here. These things should be directional as well. So we might have to get it powered up to try out before getting it installed here. All right, so I'm just doing a quick test fit to see what needs to be trimmed. We need to trim out these corners here and this whole thing down here. I'm going to try using some flush cutters. Because it's quick and it's what I got. If you have one, I absolutely recommend using a Dremel on like a drill press stand or something with a milling bit. That will make very short work of this plastic. You'll get nice even cuts. It'll be much less effort than doing something like this. The end result will be so much cleaner. But I mean if you're if you're watching this video, it's either because you just like hearing me talk or because you're actually considering doing one of these mods and you're a cheap motherfucker who's not going to backlight your console like you should. So, it's probably the route you're going to take. Hey man, if you get one of these built and you're happy with it, more power to you. I don't like them. I don't recommend them. But certainly an option. Boom. There we go. Now that'll drop in there. Easy peasy luck. Now there is some protective plastic film on this. I will be peeling it off, but first I want to actually get it installed and uh, double check that it's oriented properly because there is a front and a back. And I don't know what that, um, that little line on the screen means. We also need to, and I completely forgot about this, to remove this foam here to make as much room as possible. Hopefully it doesn't, but your foam might come off in chunks, and unfortunately that's just how it's going to be. And if that happens, you'll just have to sit here picking foam chunks off. 
And it looks like that's what's about to happen to me. Yep. Oh, it's my... Pretty lucky here, it's coming off mostly, except from these few spots on the ribbon cable. Alright. Those should be removed, but I'm just going to leave them for now. Drop that in there. Now you notice the screen does move around a little bit. It doesn't quite sit where it's supposed to. Um, once we get the uh, front light panel adhered to the screen, that shouldn't be an issue. But until then, you'll just have to pay attention to that and uh, move it around if, if that's the case. Plug this in before dropping it in. There we go. So it should still work perfectly. There we go. But there's no light, not yet, because I haven't actually done the wiring. But just as a baseline here, let's take a look and see it is pulling down here. It's moving around quite a bit between 57 and 70. So let's call it about 65 amps, or 65 milliamps, excuse me. Let's go ahead and get this light wired up. I'm going to leave plenty of slack on these for the time being because, like I said, I am going to show how to get this wired up. Um, or I guess installed proper. So the ground that most instructions tell you to use is just right off of the power switch and that's perfectly fine. So we'll go ahead and get that wired in here. Boom, there's one and the other is the positive voltage, but we want to use a, a resistor. I believe you can get this wired up without the resistor, and it will be much brighter at the cost of 
quite significant battery life. I know some kits come with the resistor already installed there. This is not one of those kits. Can't even see, sorry. Just gonna get the resistor soldered on. And then a little bit of heat shrink would go a long way. open and then I closed it because of reasons so I believe one of the recommendations is either the back of this capacitor here C23 it looks like or uh, this transistor here Q6 the wiring does depend on whether you're using a 32 or a 40 pin Game Boy Advance. I am using a 40 pin. I'm going to go ahead and trim that down just a little bit more because that is absurdly long. And get that soldered in there. And that should be it. We'll just have to do a little bit more wire routing to arrange that, but I'm going to be taking this apart in just a second, so I'm not going to bother. Alright. Turns on, and that looks kind of not so great. And it is pulling 106 to 115. So, oh, dropped all the way down to 96. Let's call it about 110. So it's pulling quite a bit more. It's not even in game. It doesn't look that great, but it certainly looks way better than some of my previous attempts there. Let's flip the panel around and see if it looks any better. I don't think it will, because I'm pretty sure it's the correct side. Pretty sure it's uh, in the correct orientation. The wires should be on the right side there. Let's just double check. All right, why aren't you going together? There we go. All right, here goes nothing. The panel backwards now. And it looks mostly the same, but I notice it is quite a bit harder to see. So it looks like this line, um, this line drawn on the panel itself, that indicates the front. So that should be out. So I did guess right. 
there weren't too many instructions included with this. And yeah, it does make a difference. It must be the correct orientation, otherwise it's gonna look terrible. Well, more terrible. So let's get that flipped around. Actually, we'll not get it flipped around because we will try installing it now. Proper. Nice and proper. So like I said, you can do this with or without um, Loca, the liquid optically clear adhesive. But for a much better result, you will want to use the Loca. Get this desoldered. Yeah, it's hard to tell which side that's on, but that does that does indicate the front. And this panel is trimmed such that it should you should be able to line it up pretty easily outside of the shell. So let's go ahead and uh, try it out, shall we? I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned off. And actually, before trying this out, let's try. Let's do a. Let's do a quick test here. I'm gonna lay out some masking tape here. Some masking tape here. Because I've got two tubes of. Uh, Loka here. I've got this cheap stuff that I just got on AliExpress and seems to work, but I definitely had problems with during my last install, and that could have been because I just didn't let it cure enough. But I've also got this uh, Osaka 7 Loka here that is allegedly the good stuff. So let's try out both and uh, see if there really is a difference. Now this stuff cures with UV here, so we should be able to squirt a little bit out. It's the generic stuff on the left. Ooh, I lost my lid, hang on. Uh, there it is. And here is the expensive stuff on the right. And during my first install, I just used the power of the sun to cure this stuff. And that, quite frankly, might have been my problem. But now I've got this fancy flashlight with, um, with a UV LED in it. And so we'll try that out and see that works. I have no idea how long this stuff needs to cure, but this should be enough. Focus down there. That stuff is definitely not cured. Oh wow, that looks way different on camera than it does uh, in person. I can see why people have problems because this stuff still isn't cured yet. A lot of time, uh, I haven't seen too many videos on this, but I have read some um, 
some guides, and a lot of times people recommend like a, a a nail curing bed. Like if you're if you're getting your nails did, and um, that seems to work a lot of the time. I've also seen some guides that say, "Oh, just use the sun; that'll work." And I can speak from experience when I say it doesn't quite work. Um, I live in a very sunny climate, and I tried getting my uh, front light panel cured on a very sunny day. I did not have good luck with that. I had issues. Oh, looks like it's starting to get cured. So the good stuff seems to take quite a bit longer to cure. It could also be that the UV LED in this thing is just really not that strong. Should also go without saying that you shouldn't should uh, should wear eye protection, something like this. But I'm saying it anyway. You should wear eye protection with something like this. If the adhesive is not 100% cured, you will have issues down the line and it will be significantly worse than just not using it at all. You'll get an issue that they refer to as spidering. And if you Google the keywords loca and spidering, you will see lots of horror stories of people having issues. And uh, if that occurs, you know, if, if you end up with some spidering on your install, the fix is to completely remove all of the loca and redo it from scratch. And if you can't get all the loca off, which is usually the case when it comes to front light panels, you need a new LCD and a new front light panel. And that's just the way it is. It's just, it's just the way she goes. All right, that is getting nice and cured. I'm pretty sure it is supposed to be, um, like I don't think it's supposed to be jelly-like consistency. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like an actual hard, um, like plastic-like texture. I'm going to keep trying to cure this here. Might have to end up taking a break while I let this cure because this is taking much longer than I thought it would. I also have very little experience with this so this might be the extent to which it cures. They're both at about the same level. You can see I'm leaving marks, but if you leave it alone long enough, it goes away. really glad I tested this because I had no idea how long this stuff would take to cure and there's really no way to actually test it once you've got the uh, panel on. Alright, so I'm going to pause for a few minutes here and I'm just going to make sure that this is absolutely as cured as can be. I'll be back in a moment. Right, so it's been, I don't know, somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes call it eight minutes. I just left the flashlight literally sitting on top of it. No light is escaping because um, the lens is actually not quite against the bottom so I could just drop it over there. But it's still kind of tacky so I think that's just the best we're gonna get. If you touch it, it does come off a little bit. Probably shouldn't have done that but here we are. And uh, I think that's I think that's the best we're gonna get. Um, I think that's just how this adhesive works. Like I said, I am not an expert, but it's 
what we got. Pretty sure that's just how it works. Okay, so I'm gonna peel this up here. It's not very sticky, but set that aside. I haven't decided which stuff I'm going to use based off of that test I just did. Even though the Osaka 7 takes quite a bit longer to cure, allegedly it's the good stuff and I've already had a bad experience with the other stuff, so fuck it, let's try it out. What's the worst that could possibly happen? I don't see how any of this could possibly backfire. I'm going to go ahead and peel this off here. Nope, before I do that, I'm actually going to lay down some de adhesive here. And in all the videos I've seen, they just do big ol' X glob here. It might not be enough, so let's do it the uh, PCMR way. So we can always glob up the extra stuff. off the protective layer there and let's just go for it now, unfortunately bubbles do happen but because it's transparent we can uh, work them out with a little bit of pressure and just kind of wiggle it around boom there's one Still quite a few more. I am just now realizing that I probably skipped a step, so we might have issues down the line. One thing that you should be doing is you should be peeling off the... There's that bubble. You should be peeling off the reflective tape on the bottom there to make sure that all the loca under that area gets cured. Um, so that's probably not going to happen with this mod here, but... Do our best, okay? Alright, once all the bubbles are worked out, we can set this right about where it's supposed to go. I'm not going to worry too much about the scratches and shit because that should all come off when I pull this protective layer off. So now it's time to start curing. And uh, this is going to be a long process because I know it took quite a few minutes for that to cure and I need to make my work my way through the whole LCD here. Um, that nice, nice and lined up should be lined up with the edges nice and straight. If it's not straight, you're going to have problems. I'm not going to have a good time, but uh, here we go. I'll be back in a few minutes when I'm, uh, hopefully, when this is all cured up. Alright, so it's been like an hour and a half or so, and I've just been leaving my flashlight on top of this thing um, in with the UV light on, um, just moving it around every few minutes. I think it's pretty good. I mean, the panel's not moving around anymore. If I press on it, you know, I'm not seeing the loca move, so hopefully that's it. Um, I do have some concerns about the edges, but... Short of just leaving it to cure for even longer, I don't know what else I can do about that. Uh, I think, I think it's good though. Because I mean, you can see when I'm pressing down on the panel, it's on the light panel, it's pressing down on the LCD. And it's not just, you know, moving around. So, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and get this assembled. Blow this out real quick. Get this peeled off. Oh my, she's a beauty. 
So this kit did come with a switch here that we can use, and I believe the general idea of these size switches is you can jam them in that cutout right there and then use a, uh, a tool in the battery compartment to turn the light on and off, but I just, mm, I don't know, I'm not really digging it, you know? Totally jam that in there just like that, and then we don't have to deal with the wire routing. Yeah, screw it. Let's let's just go for it. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> don't worry, I still have it. Okay. So let me turn my iron back on here. So we will route this over there. I think this wire is just barely long enough. This kit also did come with some adhesive, 100% not sure what that's for. And it came with some heat shrink, which I am reasonably confident is for right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that put on there. I'm gonna use my hot air station, and for those that aren't aware, it does make my lights flicker. I'm still pretty sure my camera doesn't pick up on it, but just in case, sensitive to that sort of thing. Perfect. up and around. I definitely should have shortened this wire first. That was dumb. Uh, yeah, screw it. We'll just keep it extra long. It'll be fine. Just tuck the extra down here. Definitely should have trimmed that first. I wasn't thinking about it. Let's get this solder down too. Does not matter which two pins you use, as long as you use one of the middle pins and one of the outside pins. I'm going to use the middle pin and the far pin instead of the middle pin and the close pin. Oh, 
boom, that's it. And if all goes well enough, we should be able to jam that in the back. Let's go ahead and switch it on. Plug the screen in. Let's see what kind of power this thing. Is it on? Uh-oh. Oh. oh. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I was just testing you. Look at that. Kill that light. Where's the switch? There it is. So, that looks... awful. Not sure if I did something wrong or what, but the light basically does nothing. I may or may not have gotten it backwards, despite all my careful attention to detail there. Well, I suppose that's uh, not worst case scenario, but certainly not good. We'll just go ahead and pretend that I got this right, and then I'll go ahead and continue assembling this. Because I do not have another panel to try this out. It looked fine with the uh, plastic on it still, but as soon as I peeled that plastic off, I don't know. Almost like the conclusion is uh, don't use loca. Which, alright, fine, but I think the conclusion should be just don't do a front light. One more screw because I lost the last one. I'm really good at losing that one last screw. Uh oh. Is that it? Nope. Oh well. I'm sure I'll find it in a few minutes here. So, we kill all the lights here. So you tell me, is that nice and, uh, nice and visible? Does that improve your viewing experience? Let's go ahead and compare it to a regular backlight mod. I 
and uh, just in case you're of the type, oh Marco, it's definitely possible to do front light without, without totally bulging it. Well, yeah, totally right. I have one. A front light can look good. They genuinely can. But it's just, it's not worth, it's not worth it. Um, I mean, I fucked this one up, obviously. I don't have another Game Boy Advance panel to try this again, but I do have a uh, quite a few Game Boy Color panels. I have this one that I salvaged from a build a long time ago. Six months ago. <laughs> I also whipped out my time machine and I have one of these bad boys so I could do another build, which is actually precisely what this is. This is an afterburner kit. Um, which I guess leads me to my uh, my point here. If you want a good looking front light, unfortunately, you're gonna need to track down one of these. This is an afterburner kit. And uh, they stopped making these at least 15 years ago. So, good luck. Um, this looked quite a bit better before I had it loaded down, but nothing I can do to fix it now. It's kind of adhered. I genuinely thought I had it the right way around. Right way around. So I guess just double check that before you glue it down because it's it's stuck there now. So yeah. You might be sitting there thinking, but Marco, it can look good. You just fucked it up. Yeah, you're right. It can look good and I did just fuck it up. Um, but seriously, you'll be so much happier with a backlight. These things are like 45 bucks. These things are like 10 bucks. Just get the extra 35 bucks. Just trust me. It'll be, it'll be worth it. Oh, but Marco, that's the only kid I can afford. Well, sounds like you've got some other priorities you should be, um, prioritizing. But seriously, it's... All right, let, let, let's just pretend for a minute. Let's just pretend for a minute that I didn't totally fuck that up. This is your best case scenario right here. That's what it looks like. You can uh, dial down the brightness, I guess, so it looks a little bit better on camera. You can't honestly think that this looks better than uh, one of these things. That I totally thought I had ready. telling me that the front light is worth the 10 bucks if you get it right it is I think I've proved that it's much more difficult to get these right than it is to get these right um, yeah there you go if you think I'm totally full of shit let me know I am human I am prone to mistakes it does happen every now and then obviously uh, but I just, I don't, I don't think these are worth it. I've never done a video on them before. I have done one before. Um, looks like I'm 0 for 2 now, so I've got that going for me. I do have one more planned. Hopefully I can get that third one correct. Probably not, but I guess we'll find out next time. Um, but anyway, I'll go ahead and throw a link to where you can get one of these if you want, if you really want. I really still can't recommend them. Um, I'll also throw a link to the Loka that I used. It is that um, fancy dancy Osaka 7 stuff. Uh, I ended up grabbing it from Handheld Legend, which I haven't really had any good experiences with them lately, but they were also the only people who had it in stock relatively locally, so I just went with it anyway. Um, it's all right. I used this stuff. This stuff seemed to work basically the same, uh, except that it cured significantly faster. Um, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, the expiration date, it is long since it's expired, but I've also had this for like five, six years or so. 
I can't throw a link to it because, like I said, I've had it for very many years. So, I mean, just do a search. I'm sure you'll find it. But people who are who have done a few of these and who are better at it than me recommend this stuff over this stuff. I don't know how much of that is marketing, but I haven't had any problems so far. Uh, whereas I can say without a doubt that this stuff, when I did do the install, it did not cure quite like I thought it did. I thought I had it cured. I left it out in the sun all day. Didn't work. So, there you go. Uh, also, I used a um, little flashlight with a UV LED in it. That seemed to work, but it is definitely better to use like a, a UV nail bed curing um, I don't want to say oven because that's technically not the right term, but they're basically toaster ovens, but with UV LEDs. Uh, those things seem to work. And bonus, you could use those for retrobrighting if you want. Um, I could technically use this for retrobrighting, but I ain't going to get a good finish with it, so I'm not even going to try. But there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope this wasn't too terrible to, to watch. Have a fantastic night.